With April Fool's still a recent fresh memory, it kind of got me thinking about ways to prevent from being pranked throughout the year. And I started thinking about computer security. I think a lot of us in the technology field, we sort of wear our networks and our computer security as a badge of honor. I've got all these services turned down. I've got my firewall. It's totally amazingly configured. You wouldn't believe it. VPNs from here to there, all that kind of stuff. But in reality, I think security should be looked at at, the, at kind of the same way we look at backups. Your backup isn't officially a backup until you've done a test restore, and that's just the way it is. You don't know that's a good solid data until you've tried to restore it and access it. Well, let's look at security that way. I mean, you might have done all of the right steps, but everybody's human. Maybe you missed something. So how do you know your network, your computer, all those components are completely secure until you've tried to hack it yourself? So let's talk about in this episode some tools you can use that are free to do a security audit of your own network to ensure security. Essentially, we're going to use some of the tools that the hackers out there, the attackers might use to try to get into your network. But in this time, we're using it to audit ourselves and find areas we can improve. And maybe on if everything's going great, generate reports that we can point to and say, ha, I am amazing. Look at this. Nothing found. Totally possible. But you never know until you've tested it. So in this episode, let's look at those tools. I'm really excited to share with you some of the tools and the different tricks that I've been doing. Just recently, I've been sent out uh, to a client's network to do a third-party assessment for them and, and try to find the different areas that they need improvement. Um, but before we get into that, I'd like to give a big shout to my buddies over at GoDaddy.com. If you use our codes, either Linux, which will save you 10% on any order, that's L-I-N-U-X, 10%, you get to use the promo code Linux, it's awesome, or if you're doing their shared hosting plans or even I think they're dedicated hosting, they've got Windows or Linux boxes, and you can use the code LINUX20, that's L-I-N-U-X-2-0, you save 20% off shared hosting. Man, that's sweet. Also, side note, it's actually really great hosting. I use it to mirror a lot of content on, never have an issue with it. The pricing's great, the speed's great, I really like it. And if you could use either one of those codes when you shop at GoDaddy.com, it really helps us out because it gives us a little bit extra from GoDaddy, helps us sponsor and produce these shows, or their sponsorships help us create and produce these shows, and that's awesome. So you helping them helps us. Big thanks to everybody that does that. That's Linux and Linux20 at GoDaddy.com. All right, now before I start, I gotta say this. Don't use what I'm about to talk about for nefarious purposes. Seriously, people, use these tips for what they're meant for. I don't care if you have a single computer or you run a network of a thousand, use these tips appropriately because these tools are extremely powerful. Also, these tools have occasionally caused an exploit to be tripped and sometimes that does result in like a crashing print server, for example. That's kind of a common one. Old HP JetDirect print servers, sometimes when they get scanned, don't respond very well. Also, network servers, their TCP IP stack tends to kind of take a dump. So you really have to be careful. Now, um, the tool I'm talking about is Nessus, and it has a setting in there where you can say, you know, uh, be gentle with delicate devices. And I do recommend you use that setting. Okay, so I said it. Nessus. This is the tool I'm using. There are a lot of others that I'll cover briefly, but the main bad mamma jamma that I'm using when I go out to my clients is Nessus. It, it works in the sense that it, it has a feed system that you can subscribe to, and they have two feeds. They have a commercial for business auditing purposes, the ones like I have to use if I'm going to use it uh, in, in the capacity that I'm using it as a client or as a customer uh, auditor type relationship. Um, and then they also have the home feed. It's generally a little more out of date. Sometimes some of the basic stuff is just 24 out of date, 24 hours out of date. And then what they will do is um, they will introduce uh, additional new types of things to the primary paid for feed first, and then it will trickle down to the free home feed uh, after a little bit of time. Also, the reports that you generate from the home feed will have a stamp at the bottom of each machine's report saying that it was scanned with the home feed. So you can't use the home feed and go commercially scan and then provide them with the report and say, here you go, because it will say at the bottom, this is done with the free uh, not for business use version. So 
The downside of that is their paid feed is like $1,200 a year. But if this is an area of your business, that's money well spent. Uh, or you go with third-party auditors to come in like I do and do the work. They already have a Nessus feed license. Uh, like we have a site license for our entire company. Um, and then that they already have taken care of that. You don't have to spend the money. The other nice thing about doing a third party is if you're comfortable with that, when it comes to regulatory auditors like uh, different financial institutions and medical institutions, they're required to have third party proof that their network is secured and has been checked by an outside party because obviously an outside party is uh, less likely to have an invested interest in the outcome of the report. It's it's one of the things that's required for certain fields of work. If if your purpose is just to test your own gear to make sure you're running great, you don't even care about that and you shouldn't have to. So you can check out Nessus and uh, it, it has their it, – it, it started – it has kind of an interesting history. It started as a completely open source tool and then it was acquired by a company and they keep a free version and they keep the pay version. It's, it's a little bit confusing but the great part about it is is from that open source heritage came – support for Linux, support for Mac OS X, and support for Linux. It works in a client-server type arrangement, and this is actually pretty cool. Uh, you can run the Nessus server and the Nessus client on the same computer like I do. I have them loaded on my laptop. I fire up the server, make sure all the plugins are up to date. There's just a button you click to do that. And then I fire up the client. I connect to the Nessus server, which is just on my own local machine, and then I, then I, I set up my scan parameters inside the client, hit uh, run run scan, and then the server backend actually executes the scan. Now, a reason why this is kind of cool is you could have um, a, a server that's on your network that always has the Nessus server component running, and you could have the client component on your desktop, and you could connect to the Nessus server and then just audit a specific device. You don't have to audit an entire network like I do. I go in and I scan an entire you know, subnet or, or whatever, or multiple subnets, and then I generate this huge report, and then I, I, I drill down through that report. But you could just target it at one machine if that's what you wanted to do, and that works great. The thing about the uh, end result of what you get from Nessus is you can view it in their uh, results window, but that is a little cramped. So what you probably end up wanting to do is spit it out to an HTML, HTML just basic HTML report, or there's special Nessus reporting formats for special software. But, okay. So some of the scan options you have are just everything from uh, a port scan to actually attempting to do exploits. The uh, Nessus feed provides Nessus with the most recent known security exploits and all of the past, one, past ones. So the, uh, the, the server is aware of all of the exploits for Windows 2000 or Windows 2003, all of the exploits for Red Hat Linux, all of, all of the ones just for Ubuntu Linux. It, it has general Linux exploits and then it has distribution-specific exploits because sometimes different distributions obviously package and patch different things. That's what's really cool about it. If you go into a place and you know they are running Ubuntu on all of their desktops. Well, then you don't need to run the Windows XP scanner unless maybe you wanted to pick up a rogue XP machine. The same goes um, for all kinds of AIX, um, Sun operating systems. You don't need to scan for those. So you can turn those off and save yourself time, or you can turn them on if you know that type of device is out there. It gives you that kind of flexibility, and then you can drill down and you can say, all right, well, I know that this machine has vulnerability MS08-33, uh, I don't need to test for that. I'm not going to check for that particular vulnerability. I will document that it has that. I don't know why you might want to do that. Maybe you just roll like that. It's an option, though. Nessus will take it as far as technically capable. And what I mean by that is uh, if you have, say, just from my past experience, a Windows 2000 server on your network, um, maybe you haven't gotten around to upgrading it to whatever latest OS you might want to upgrade it to. If Nessus is able to penetrate that, it will then go to the next logical conclusion of that penetration. It will try to execute code. It does really safe, simple code. Uh, generally, what it will get is a command line interface through some sort of backdoor that is triggered, and then it will do something like an IP config dump just to prove, hey, look, I got in. I was able to execute a, a command on the command line. This was its output. I've captured that to prove it. It won't do anything crazy like format C colon or anything stupid like that. It... They try to be safe, but they also then try to prove that you actually got that far. That's really cool. 
Um, the other thing it'll do is it'll take advantage of other insecurities, known insecurities in different operating systems. If there is a, an Apache vulnerability that Nessus knows about, it scans your server and it finds that vulnerability, it might try to get like an SSH command line and do a uname-a and then return the kernel version and all that stuff so it can say... I know for sure I got into that box. It'll also do OS identification just through port scanning so it can say, well, I couldn't really get into this box, but I pretty much am positive it's a Windows XP Service Pack 3 and it's uh, an in, on an Intel chip. Uh, it, or, it, you know, it, or it had these open shares and they'll generate the report. It's, it's very cool for that because you can go through this thing and you can say, oh, yeah, I do need to tighten this down and I do need to take care of this. Or, it, wow, it was able to jump into Telnet on this switch. I didn't expect that. It gives you um, the ability to sit back and look at your whole network or just even your machine from the big picture because you've probably been really in there deeply figuring out just one particular aspect of security and sometimes you forget about something else. That's why it's great to bring this tool on. Um, if you wanted to take it further than that, one of the things you can do is you can take the Nessus findings and you can work with a tool called Metasploit. Now this is a bit of a dangerous tool. Metasploit is essentially prepackaged, ready to go, known exploits that you can execute. If Nessus come back, comes back and says, this machine is running IIS 5, and I believe it has a WebDAV vulnerability, Nessus won't necessarily trigger certain vulnerabilities because it might cause all of IIS to crash, and then whoever's running a website off IIS on that particular server would no longer have a working website. So it'll say, I think I found this vulnerability, but I'm just going to leave it and tell you about it. And you can follow up on it if you want to. Uh, that's awesome, but if you do want to follow up, Metasploit's kind of like your next tool in your arsenal. You fire up Metasploit, they've got Windows versions, Mac versions, and Linux versions, command line versions, web-based versions, GUI-based versions. Um, again, it has a feed. It's all free. Metasploit's completely free. It keeps updated with known vulnerabilities. It has the GUI, which I really recommend you check out. Um, the GUI, you can search for the t particular type of exploit that you want to try checking for. You can just type in, for example, IIS. It'll list all of the known IIS exploits that they have a pre-bundled, um, I don't know what you want to call it, but we'll just call it a payload. And then you can say, okay, I'm going to choose this IIS WebDAV vulnerability. I'm going to point it at this particular host. But now here's what's crazy awesome is... Metasploit on one of the screens, I'm talking about the GUI version, will list all of the types of things you might be able to do with this particular vulnerability. And a lot of times it's add a user to the local administrators group or give yourself root access to this Linux box. Sometimes it's give myself, uh, if it's, uh, for example, a Windows box, send it this payload code, open a command line, inject into memory a DLL that's a VNC server DLL and execute it. What you get is on the port you specified, a VN server, VNC server spawns up. You can connect to that with the VNC viewer and you can see their workstation and their screen. It's pretty wild. Now, obviously, if you could get an administrator account on there, that's also pretty cool. And then it goes just as simple as uh, Metasploit can just do a connect, do a debug dump, and say, yep, I was able to get in. I could have executed a command if you wanted me to. Or you could say, get in and then just open a TCP port. Just open port 444. And then what you can do as the security auditor is you can use another tool called Nmap, which is an amazing port scanner. And you can run Nmap beforehand, before you execute the Metasploit, and then Nmap after you execute the Metasploit. And you can say, oh yeah, look, these two different port scans, they prove... Before, 444 is closed. Afterwards, port 444 is open. I was able to successfully bind something to port 444. And then you can take it to the next step and say, okay, bind a command line pipe to that. And that, that gets pretty crazy, but it essentially gives you command line access. Um, the same equivalency is available under Linux, just different types of terminology and things like that. Um, it, the level of, of uh, different types of exploits and what they can do is pretty complex so i'm not going to get into that just yet that would require its own video but metasploit is kind of the next step after you've done your nessus scan and then nmap nmap's just your general port scanner 
it'll it can attempt to do an OS fingerprint based on the data it gets back, and it'll it'll say, oh yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a Windows 2003 box. Pretty sure that's a Linux box. Whatever. Um, and pretty much every uh, Linux box ships with Nmap. Uh, Mac OS 10 has Nmap built into its network utility. It's in the utilities folder. All Macs have that. And then there is Win Nmap for Windows boxes, which gives you a command line version and also a Windows GUI version that lets you tweak some of the settings. All free. Every tool I've talked about is free. Nessus does have the purchase option if you're using it commercially, but they're all amazing tools that real day attackers are using now that you can grab and you can leverage to protect yourself. And that's what's really key is protecting yourself and being ahead of the game. Don't just set it and 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 be pretty sure it's secure. Prove it. Prove that it's secure with these tools and if it's not after you've ran these tools, identify what you need to do. Maybe you need to go find outside help to secure it. That's not a big deal if that's what it takes to make sure your data is protected. I mean, I mean, we could be talking it's your network data. We could be talking it's your home computer. It doesn't matter, does it, as long as you've checked it and if it's not safe, you take care of it. And that's what's really important. Um, data protection is a combination of backup protection, security, uh, all the rights management, all these kinds of things. So it all kind of fits together. But I just wanted to talk about some of the tools that I've been using lately that you could also use to protect yourself and your network, stay ahead of the game. They're all they're all free. It's great. Um, so if you haven't checked them out, do that. If you have any questions, let me know. You can hit me up on Twitter. I'm twitter.com slash chrislas. Send your questions in there. Let me know what you think. Maybe you know another tool. One, one last tip for all of you that have actually stuck around to the video this long is uh, if you want all of these tools plus so much more. Google the Backtrack Live Security CD. It's a Linux CD, super easy to use. You boot up, it's preloaded with all of these tools and way more. It is like a toolbox of attack tools and you can just load the sucker up and you can go to town. Now, they're very specialized. They take, a lot of them take a big learning curve. You really kind of have to know what you're doing. But if you start to play with some of them, like it includes Nessus, it includes Metasploit, it includes Nmap, you play with some of them and you build on top of that experience, you'll really start to get it after a while. So that's Backtrack, and right now there's version 4 out in beta. I really recommend you get version 4. It's got a lot of new features. It's really great. It comes with a complete GUI. It comes with a menu system with everything listed in an organized fashion. Super nice to use. I loved it. So I used it extensively in my recent security audit. Big recommendation. If you've stuck around for the video that long, then that's definitely worth it because that's huge. All right. So like I said, if you have any questions, hit me up on Twitter. And uh, thanks so much for watching this episode. I'd love to hear what some of you are doing out there with these different tools. And if you found anything that just blew your mind, did you scan a box and were just amazed? You thought you had that thing all dialed in, all secure, and then you scan it and it just blew you away with what that thing could find. I know that's happened to me. I'd love to hear about it, so let me know. I, I definitely think that's a lot of fun. All right, everybody, have fun with these tools, and remember, use them for the appropriate purposes only. This episode of An In-Depth Look is sponsored by GoDaddy.com, the world's largest host and domain name registrar. If you're ready to make an impact online, GoDaddy.com has got you covered. Domain names as low as $1.99, plus world-class hosting with unlimited disk space and bandwidth. Do-it-yourself website builders, dedicated servers, and SSL certificates, and so much more. Plus, as an in-depth viewer, enter promo code LINUX20 at checkout and save an additional 20% off any one, two, or even three years website hosting plan. Some restrictions apply. See site for details. Get your piece of the internet at GoDaddy.com daddy.com